back out changing this compressor. Um, got the gas to care of it and um, shot from these valves. Um, so I'm bolted, got the pressure lines discounted and taped up so we don't get any crap in there. No, just got to take all the wiring out, out of there, check it's dead obviously. Um, I just thought I'd show you this. It's always interesting to see what's been caught in the suction strainer. Um, some little bits of copper. if I can get that out of there. Got a piece of plastic from somewhere. Maybe a bit of sticky tape or something. That's got in the pipe work. Found a piece of breeze block in there, one of these ones. I think somebody drilled a hole through a block wall, fed the pipe through and it got a lump of breeze block inside here. And it took 20 years to wear through this mesh and then once it got into the compressor it smashed all the cylinders up. Right, we've got a I've screwed a bit of U strap to the roof there. Um, it takes my weight and I probably weigh a pretty similar to this so and so we've load tested that. I've put a bit of tension on here and hung on that and it's not moved at all so which is See what happens. But, um, yeah, that's basically that. And then, uh, get two hands on this because it's slightly off centre. I'll have to pull it over and lower it down. Right, we've got that lowered down. I've put a bit of tension on this strap there just to pull it away from the frame. I'll just keep adjusting that. Because we can't get a straight lift. just to take a bit of tension off of that. I've well, got the new one up there. Um, I left it on the pallet. On the edge of the pallet slid up the um, leg of the uh, stand quite nicely. So just took the bolts out now. I've got to get the pallet out of the way. Then we'll lower it back onto the, onto the springs. You have to be careful of these. If you're lifting one of these on by hand and you don't quite get it seated right, it can sit on the edge of there on the edge of the spring like this and if it slips off it'll fire that off at um, stupid speed so um, you always want to be careful um, for those springs right we're getting ready to put the valves on now so um, we've cleaned that face up on there with a wire brush we've got around the circular pattern we don't want to put any scratches leading out because that'll give it a path to leak so we'll, we'll clean that up cleaned all the dust out of these holes we don't want that dropping on the gasket when we put it on given that face a clean over um, we've wire brushed the threads um, something we need to check is how far we can screw these in um, because you don't want them bottoming out before the valves um, tight uh, yeah I don't know if you can see that there. We've got about a couple of mil extra. So well, there's a thickness of the gasket there. If that bolt was a bit longer, it could bottom out just when it looks like the valve's touching and you'll end up cracking the block. So you want to check that. Um, you want to clean the threads in the bolt so you don't, when you screw it in, you don't get dirt coming out and getting in between the gasket and the um, face here and that that'll 
bugger up the ceiling as well. Um, we've checked the torque range settings on here. Um, it's not very clear, but it's 25 newton meters I think for the small ones, and I think it's 56 for the bigger bolts. Got the torque wrench there, so we'll, we'll get these done up and nip them up with the torque wrench. Clean that, straighten them out. Got these put in with some uh, sealant on there. It's all bolted down, all about to uh, tightened up, vacuumed out. We've got to open the valves back up again. Um, put that wire back on there. We've checked the wiring diagram, it seems to be okay. Um, got three amp probes on it, one on each phase. And then we're getting ready to turn it on and keep our fingers crossed. basically the cylinder head, that's three pins there and that's your other three pins. On, on, on these compressors you can wire them in star or delta, so you can, you can join the windings up in a star, or you can jo um, join them up in delta, um, which is why you've got, you've got the start of the winding and the end of the winding. If you want to look at it that way, with each winding. Anyway, that pin there, which should be over here, is joined to that pin there, so uh, they're a mirror image of each other. So we need to check this one and make sure that's the same. But um, I'm starting to think it could well have lost a phase because um, we haven't changed the contact yet. We need to change the contact when you put a new compressor on there. But I haven't checked that. Um, because the way this system's installed is they've got the two compressors and the milk tank, which is in its washing cycle at the moment, is all run out of one panel. You, you can't isolate anything. Half of this box here is still live because they've only put a four pole switch in and they should have put something like a six or an eight pole so they could cut the control circuit and the feed for the crankcase heater. But, um, Generally these things get put in by the cheapest company and they're not put into a very high standard so you're working with what we've got really. Um, so it could well have lost the phase on the um, contactor. That might well have burnt the old compressor out. Um, we might be seeing the same symptoms on this one. So before we can do any more with this, I need to wait for the tank to finish washing because I can't open the panel up without turning the power off. And if I do that, the wash cycle goes back to the start. And that's going to take him another hour, and we're at um, it's 12 o'clock now. Um, but it gets, it gets, um, you can end up where they can't milk because the tank's still bloody washing. Oh, and they'll, they'll have used all the hot water because it's gone through two wash cycles, more or less. Anyway, so that's what we need to check is get this plate out of here and then check all them pins out and see where they. Um, Go. See if they're wired up the same as the original. They might not be. Right, that's finished washing. So we can uh, turn the power off. contact with which so somewhere in here I've got my little key. It's probably not very good with that chain hanging out of it. That gets the power back on. There we are. 
that's our uh, our saw that's running. That would be the suspect one. I don't look too bad. I've had these go faulty before. Why well, the power don't come through them? Check the compressor first. Right, that's 3.6, and we had 3.9 on the other one, so that's near enough. Especially as it seems a little bit shorted out. And it slipped off. Three point six again, and that is the same as on there. And this should be three point six across these two. Which it is. So that is wired up the same as the original. So I think we'll uh, we're looking at a faulty um, contact most likely. Oh, dude. 